nearly all computer radios today, feature aileron rudder mixing to counter adverse yaw. Adverse yaw is an inherent opposite yaw, or skid, that occurs during aileron deflections. Pilots have always assumed that the lack of correlation between their intentions and the response of the plane, to be strictly the need for more practice, or possibly the wind, when in fact adverse yaw has been a big reason. Adverse yaw is most pronounced on high lift flat bottom wing aircraft, such as those used for primary flight training, and gets worse at slower airspeeds, and when making larger aileron inputs. Adverse yaw is caused by the wing with the down aileron, generating more lift, and therefore drag, than the wing with the raised aileron. Increased drag causes the wing to drag rearward while banking into turns, making course corrections, exiting turns, etc. Pilots therefore have to hold in the aileron longer to overcome the adverse skid. The result is an increased potential for overcontrolling, a tendency for the plane to sink during the skids, and a lack of flying consistency caused by the out of sync relationship between control inputs and the response of the plane. Furthermore, since the principal effect of wind is exaggerating deviations that would otherwise be minor on calmer days, adverse yaw creates a whole slew of problems when trying to fly a trainer in windy conditions. In the past, people would try to reduce the effects of adverse yaw by flying at higher speeds, making the plane more maneuverable by lessening wing dihedral, differential aileron travel, and avoiding flying in the wind. All with minor effect. The logical solution to counter adverse yaw is with the surface that controls yaw, the rudder. Coordinated rudder deflections along with and in the same direction as the ailerons prevent the plane from yawing in the opposite direction while banking into and out of turns, making course corrections, rolling, etc. First RC Flight School recommends utilizing the aileron rudder mixing function in the radio to automatically coordinate the rudder with the aileron. By doing so, the plane response will more accurately reflect the control inputs you make, leading to learning proper control earlier. As a bonus, aileron rudder mixing also expands the capabilities of a primary trainer airplane by helping aileron rolls remain axial and on heading throughout. The improved control achieved with aileron rudder mixing also permits flying in winds that would normally ground most trainers. To be more exact, the positive control achieved with aileron rudder mixing enables you to correct deviations more precisely and promptly before the wind has a chance to exploit them. Thus, even experienced sport flyers have good reasons to utilize this setup on their flat bottom wing planes. Note that when aileron rudder mixing is being used, pilots still have independent rudder control on the left stick, for left hand ground steering, and maneuvers requiring independent rudder. In fact, learning to use independent rudder on the left stick, proves easier after learning to fly with AR mixing, because much of the right stick control will have already become routine, thanks to the consistency achieved with the mix. Be clear, the function of the rudder here is not to turn the airplane. Rather, the purpose of the rudder is strictly to prevent adverse yaw, in order to achieve a precise, axial bank and roll response. Upon activating aileron rudder mixing, you need to confirm that the rudder moves in the same direction as the aileron. That is, the rudder should deflect toward the up aileron. The rule of thumb on a flat bottom wing airplane is to adjust the aileron rudder mixing percentage so that the degree of rudder deflection matches the degree of aileron one to one. At first RC flight school, we simply gauge the degree or angle of aileron deflection visually and visually match an equal angle of rudder. If for some reason we are unable to set a one-to-one -one relationship, we'll get it as close as we can, knowing from experience that a few degrees more or less is not going to make any appreciable difference. Note, adverse yaw is minimal on a fully symmetrical wing airplane, and therefore AR mixing is optional, and typically no more than a degree or two when activated. When the wing is semi-symmetrical, in between flat bottom and fully symmetrical, set up the AR mix so that the rudder deflection angle is half as much as the ailerons. Then check the setup by flying the airplane directly at, or away from you. Bank left and right to confirm that the banks are axial and the fuselage stays pointed in the same direction throughout. If you still observe some adverse yaw, obviously increase the mix. If the plane turns slightly into the direction of the bank, 
Reduce the mix. If you are hesitant to use AR mixing, you can always start with less, and then keep increasing it until the bank and roll response is finally axial. You can be confident that after applying the one-to-one -one rule of thumb to a flat bottom wing airplane, adverse yaw will be undetectable, banks, corrections, and rolls will be smooth and axial. The plane will feel more like it's on rails, and you will feel more connected to the plane when you fly. Many new flyers eventually go on to enjoying the precise handling and increased capabilities of symmetrical wing models. Once again, symmetrical wing airplanes require little or no AR mixing, because adverse yaw is minimal with this type. Ultimately, those who learn to fly a flat bottom wing trainer with AR mixing, will find the transition to symmetrical wing models easier than most. That's because the control habits learned flying an AR mixed basic trainer, are the same techniques used to fly symmetrical wing airplanes, since in both instances pilots are flying without adverse yaw. Those who learn to fly with adverse yaw will have to retrain their habits when flying an aerobatic model without much adverse yaw. Note, if you're inclined at some point to switch off the aileron rudder mixing on a flat bottom wing airplane, expect to need a lot more control inputs to overcome the sloppier responses. If inclined to fly without the mixing, you would need to physically coordinate the aileron and rudder control sticks in the same direction to eliminate adverse yaw. But remember, that technique only applies to flat bottom wing airplanes and would not be appropriate when flying symmetrical wing airplanes. As stated, maintaining a direct correlation between control inputs and the response of the plane, is instrumental to developing optimum control habits. Consider that when the initial control inputs are applied correctly, the need for additional corrections may not even exist. That's when a pilot becomes free to think ahead of the airplane, and more efficiently take on new challenges. Thus, by removing the obstacle of adverse yaw, aileron rudder mixing proves to be one of the most effective tools to ensure that pilots learn proper control from the start, and therefore continue to enjoy steady advancement and a more successful future.